Chapter 6. Please test your servants for ten days. Give us nothing but vegetables to eat and water to drink. Then compare our appearance with that of the young men who eat the royal food, and treat your servants in accordance with what you see. So he agreed to this and tested them for ten days. At the end of the ten days, they looked healthier and better nourished than any of the young men who ate the royal food. Daniel 1, 12 through 15. A few feet beneath the water inside the floating plastic cylinder, I watched the steel cages being lifted out with Alcyon's crane. It takes a few minutes to tie the large steel cages in place on the wind ship's stern before it's my turn. Taking in on the thick rope that supports the plastic plastic cylinder, Captain and Theri pull it closer to the stern. Theri holds the twin top hatch open so I can hand up my scuba tanks and weight belt to Capkin. I'm really cold from the long exposure in the chilly water. With my teeth chattering, I do a rapid 360 degree turn to make sure no great white sharks are lurk lurking nearby then reach my numb hands upward out of the water. Feeling weak as a puppy from the cold, I'm almost completely reliant upon my teammates to pull me up and out of the cylinder. Even though it only takes a few seconds to lift me out, it is an intense moment laced with vivid fear that a great white shark might unexpectedly lunge for me out of the water. Climbing onto the stern of the windship, I awkwardly strip off my wetsuit and stand shivering in the near tropical heat of the day. The sun feels terrific, but I only pause for a minute to appreciate it. There is much work to do. I help Captain gather up all the diving equipment to rinse off the salt water. Dried salt crystals will eventually damage our equipment. We begin to f by filling a 20-gallon tub with, f with fresh water. There is always a shortage of drinking water on ships at sea. To conserve this precious resource, we follow strict water rations. Cameras get the first soaking in the tub, then are carefully dried off with towels. The regulators are next in the tub, followed by the dive masks and fins. Then finally the wetsuits are dunked. The briny water that is left is used to flush off the deck. The sun is finally warming my body as I reach for the hose for a quick rinse off myself. A small amount of water feels terrific as I wash residue salt from my skin. Then I dash below deck to dress before helping Bruno, the chef, set the table for the evening meal. Tonight, Bruno is serving lamb roast, one of his specialty dishes. The preparation is extensive. He begins by rubbing the lamb with oil, garlic, and herbs. Then he places it in a roaster on a thick bed of onions. The onions will soak up the fat drippings. He scoops globs of butter and heavy cream into the pan to make a rich sauce for the lamb. Next, he will put the lamb roast on a serving dish. Top it with the fat-soaked onions, then cover it with the thick sauce. Bruno sniffs at his dish with great relish. Um, you don't know what you're missing, Mr. Crazy Vegetarian. Man is the only animal that can remain on friendly terms with the victims he intends to eat until he eats them. Samuel Butler. I look at the glistening sauce and lamb grease dripping from the onions. I'd say I'm missing about 70 grams of fat and a whole lot of animal cholesterol. You can't describe fine French cuisine in chemical terms. Bruno is intensely upset. Why not? My body will. The chef and I are about to rehash an old argument between us when we are joined by Paul, our engineer. As usual, he quickly 
sides with the chef. Meat is one of the best things you can eat. Pounds his chest as if to give credence to his words. Meat makes the body strong like a powerful engine. Paul doesn't know it, but he has just given me the perfect model to argue my point. Okay, I grin. Let's view the body as a biological engine that uses food for fuel. The performance and efficiency of our biological engine is going to be dependent upon the quality of the foods of the fuel we put into it. Dirty fuels will choke our engine, making it stall and hard to start. If the fuel is contaminated, it can induce mechanical and chemical damage that can result in early engine failure. Are you calling my dinner contaminated? Bruno has picked up a meat cleaver and is sizing me up. No, I'm just going to compare various types of fuel for a biological engine model. I reply, stepping a little bit farther out of the cleaver range. If an engine or a human body is kept clean, receives, receives proper care, and uses only high-quality fuels, it can deliver superior performance far beyond its normal lifespan. It is true, and meat is a powerful, high-octane fuel. Paul loves to argue. Engineering is warming to the subject. All right, but let's measure the fuel's octane and calories. I pick up a carrot to illustrate with. We get calories from carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. Carbohydrates are the cleanest burning calories. They are found in vegetables like this carrot and in grains, nuts, and fruits. Fats are the type of calories our bodies store. I dip the carrots in the glistening sauce, earning a quick slap on my hand from Bruno. The hit startles me because Bruno is still holding the cleaver. The carrot and I again retreat a step beyond cleaver range as I continue. Fats are mostly found in meats, eggs, and dairy products, and to a smaller extent in nuts, grains, and in some fruits like avocados. Our bodies need some fat in our daily diet, but only in small amounts. I thought we were talking about engines, Paul observes dryly, but we are. I quickly continue lest I lose his interest. Excessive amounts of fat, particularly animal fat, also known as cholesterol, can clog the engine's plumbing. Plumbing? inquires Paul. Yes, I'm talking about our arteries, intestines, and colon. But for you, Paul, I grin, that's what happens when an engine's carburetor, valves, and muffler becomes clogged with hardened plaque or rust. But meat is full of protein. Bruno has temporarily forgotten about his cleaver. Actually, proteins are found in all of the foods we have mentioned, I answer just in varying amounts. Proteins are the building blocks for our engines. Paul is pleased to prove a point. And meat has a lot more protein than your carrot. That's true, I reply. But our biological engine only needs so much protein for repairing and maintaining your bodies. Excessive protein will be used as calories, and protein doesn't burn as clean, nor as easily as carbohydrates. This is why the best possible diet for our biological engine should consist mainly of vegetables, grains, nuts, and fruits. Says who? inquires Bruno. Well, all the best scientific evidence and our biological engine's te technical manual. We have a technical manual for our biological engines? Paul is intrigued because he collects technical manuals. Yes, I smile, then rush to my cabin to get one. Paul stares at what is in my hands. Hey, but that's just a Bible, he laughs. I open the Bible to Genesis 1, 29-30, and begin to read. Then God said, I give you every seed-bearing plant on the face of the whole earth, and every tree that has fruit with seed in it. They will be yours for food. 
and to all the beasts of the earth and all the birds of the air and all creatures that move on the ground, everything that has the breath of life in it, I give every green plant for food. And it was so. I closed the Bible. God originally intended that we be vegetarians. Fruits, grains, nuts, herbs, and vegetables are all fuels that provide a rich diversity of awesome benefits. They are high in carbohydrates, low in fats, and easily assimilated proteins. Provide a diverse range of vitamins, minerals, and amino acids, and are loaded with body cleansing fiber. I open a cabinet door, take out a can of baked beans, and slam it down on the counter. The only downside of these food groups are the man made insecticides and additives that are sometimes dumped into them to encourage profits, not fitness. Wait! Bruno dramatically takes my Bible and opens it to Genesis 9 3 and begins to read Everything that lives and moves will be food for you. Just as I gave you the green plants, now I give you everything. Paul points to the lamb roast. The lamb moves so we can eat it. And it is no longer just a thing, chimes in Paul. It is now fine French cuisine. True, but God originally didn't mean for us to eat meat. This only happens to us after Adam and Eve get kicked out of the Garden of Eden. Hopefully I'm finally getting my point through to them as I add. Fuels that potentially cause our biological engine to make the most harm are the fats from animal products. Also, many of our domestic animals have become potential time bombs loaded with added toxins, metals, poisons, antibiotics, and supplemental hormones, along with the additional threat of possible disease-carrying viruses and organisms. Paul holds up his hands. Enough! You have forgotten the most important point of all. I like to eat meat. Bruno slaps his hands in triumph. Score one for my French cuisine. Stephen, please go ring the bell. Dinner is served. People are the only animals who eat themselves to death. The American Medical Association. Soon a dozen of us are gathered around the dinner table. I glance at Paul, who is 20 pounds overweight. Through proper diets, I know he could avoid his weight problem fight off many potential diseases, slow down aging, and substantially increase his energy and stamina. As the team medic, I often have to treat Paul for various infections and other maladies, most of which I believe are a direct result of his excessive diet. How can I convince Paul and Bruno that the body benefits most from living foods in their natural state, in simply prepared. A carrot plucked from the garden is full of living nourishment. Everything that God packed into a carrot is there in its best possible condition. A garden carrot is bursting with robust proteins, carbohydrates, vitamins, and living enzymes. Even its fiber, minerals, and water are in their most cleanest and most healthful state. One of the reasons fresh squeezed juice is so good for the body is that the plant's roots filter the water so effectively. The human body thrives in a garden, which is exactly why God placed Adam and Eve in the most beautiful garden on earth. Today, the majority of people live in cities instead of working with garden hoes. Most of us are pushing around shopping carts. So I would like to take us on a rather unique shopping cart tour of the average grocery market. Beginning in the middle of the store, we find the canned foods where we will select a can of carrots. If we open the can and look inside, we will see it is full of dead vegetables. They had probably been dead for a period of time. To some extent, they have also been cooked and preserved 
before being packed in water. Canned vegetables are usually limp, somewhat lacking in flavor, lower in nutrition, and sometimes artificially colored. Imagine a carrot wearing makeup and making it to make it more appealing. Canned vegetables are okay to eat, but not great for you or your taste buds. True carrot greatness is found in gardens when we pull one out of the ground. In the frozen food section, we can get good quality carrots, particularly if the carrots are not overly processed. During the winter, when fresh fruits and vegetables are less available, the frozen food section offers good alternatives. However, this is also the section where ice cream and frozen pizza are found. The problem is that these foods happen to taste really good, which is where moderation helps. It's okay to eat ice cream, but not the whole container. And pizza is fine as part of a meal, but not the whole meal. An average slice of cheese pizza packs a walloping 300 calories with 11 grams of fat. Add a meat topping and get 10 more grams of fat luggage. Speaking of cholesterol, the meat section of the store is where they keep the previously mentioned domestic animals, now deceased. I don't mean to be gross, but we don't need to look at what is really being offered here. For example, I will use a chicken. In our forefathers' days, chickens were animals that scratched and pecked about the barnyard. They were raised in nests by hens and had a lot of freedom with a diverse diet of bugs, seeds, nuts, grains, rocks, and the occasional rock aids their digestion. Today we have developed the commercial chicken. Commercial chickens are hatched from eggs that have been mass incubated under heat lamps. Baby commercial chickens never see an adult chicken, nor are they given the opportunity to reach adulthood themselves. The barnyard and the outdoor chicken coop have been replaced by huge commercial sheds with banks of artificial lights. One of the advantages of artificial lighting is an enclosed environment in an enclosed environment is that the bird's growth cycle can be accelerated. Long days means the chicks will eat more feed. Notice I didn't use the word food. Commercial chicken feed sometimes comes with very questionable sources, none of which can compare with a living diet of bugs, nuts, seeds, grains, and the occasional rock. Fast growth chickens are also ensured by supplementing their feed with added hormones and antibiotics, all of which can be passed on in varying degrees to the, to the consumer. Did I mention that the primary cause of salmonella poisoning in the, chi- in the United States is caused by contaminated commercial chicken meats? A farmed chicken enjoys a life that is full of barnyard adventures. There are other animals to see, plants to look under, bugs to chase, and the thrill of chicken social structure. There is even the excitement of of meeting a rooster decked out in his full plumage. Commercial chicken lives in a sterile environment that is empty of everything but other commercial chickens. Barnyard chickens can live for years and discover what it is about bird life that God intended for them to know. A commercial chicken, however, lives in a barren existence in the confines of a warehouse. For these unfortunate chicks, remember, they don't reach full adulthood. Maybe it's almost a mercy that their lives lifespan is only measured in weeks. Did you know that the national animal for France is the rooster? It is because this bird is known for its pride and courage. Commercial roosters never get the opportunity to prove their courage. In many countries, commercial roosters are given hen hormones to make the roosters more plump. To put it in the simplest of terms, 
Are we being fair to the commercial rooster and hen? Being a domesticated farm animal in America can be tough, and it doesn't have to be this way. The problem is always is greed, and it is the animals that suffer the most. However, the consumer doesn't fare well either in this one-sided arrangement. Our next stop is the dairy section. There are positive and negative aspects of milk products. I enjoy dairy products, but am moderate in their consumption. An 8-ounce glass of low-fat milk still packs 5 grams of fat. Cheese is mostly fat, as is butter. Eggs have good nutritional value, but they do not carry a heavy load of fat baggage. We also now have the commercial egg, which is from commercial chickens living in huge egg factories. There are chickens whose sole function in life is to produce eggs. They live inside extremely small cages where their feet never touch real ground. It is why they are called wire-raised chickens by people running the industry. Ever wonder why they now call it an egg industry instead of a chicken ranch? Their food is automatically delivered just as their eggs are mechanically removed. In other words, these living creatures are tended by machines. The only need for the touch of a human hand is to remove the chicken carcass when the poor animal dies. Talk about unhappy chickens. Remember, these tightly caged animals have wings that God meant for flying. God loves the animals of the earth. They are our companions and our friends. Domestic animals are totally dependent upon us as their caretakers. When greedy people exploit animals to render a greater profit, it is our responsibility as Christians to exercise our ability to choose better options. Most markets now offer cage-free eggs from chickens allowed to peck and scratch on the ground. These eggs cost a few cents more per egg, but the price is certainly worth it, particularly to the cage-free chicken. I am fortunate in that a local farmer delivers eggs directly to my door. His chickens live in an old-fashioned chicken coop and have the run of his family far, farm to pursue seeds, buck, bugs, rocks, etc. The yolks of these eggs are a deep, healthy yellow. Commercial eggs are always a pale yellow because of their inmate chicken's restricted diet. Remember that, remember, these are birds that would be surprised at seeing the sun or moon. Stepping into the baker, bakery, we have found a place to linger. I love the smell of freshly baked bread. Walking quickly past the donuts, which are loaded with sugar and fat, and go directly to the whole wheat breads. Roman soldiers conquered most of the world, the known world, carrying a daily ration of whole wheat bread. Grains are a potential muscle powerhouse. They are loaded with the nutrients our, body need the mo our bodies need the most. One of the best ways to lose weight is to eat lots of grains, wheat, oatmeal, rice, etc. In itself, bread is not fattening. It is what we put on bread that is fattening. Bread and cooked whole grain cereals are serious energy foods that encourage the body to burn fat reserves. All ranchers know that a horse can work all day long on a single feeding of oats. A government research project confirmed that an oatmeal breakfast delivers continuous energy for up to five hours, longer than any other common breakfast menu. This includes the all-American artery-clogging breakfast of fried eggs, bacon, hash browns, and buttered-soaked white bread. Because oatmeal gives up its calories slowly, it acts like a biological furnace that actually encourages the, bo the body to burn the fats through energy-induced activity. This is a pretty good reason for eating grains. I avoid white enriched bread, which has had most of the nutrition milled out of it.
I also recommend wilder brown rice varieties over white rice, which is basically overprocessed. People who intend to practice a vegetarian diet need to eat a rich diversity of foods to ensure they get all the nutrients they need. The body requires nutritional balance to function effectively. This is particularly true of complex amino acids, which are organic compounds that form the building blocks of proteins. Certain basic foods complement the amino acids, acid content of the other, such as beans and rice or cereal and milk. By combining food groups at each meal, the vegetarian helps to ensure a proper diet of complex amino acids. Proteins, carbohydrates, fats, and vitamins. Our last stop is the fresh vegetable and fruit department. This is the garden inside the market. It is a place to pause and be refreshed. Here, everything is good for you, depending on in individual allergies. The fruit and vegetables smell healthy and refreshing. Almost everything can be eaten without preparation. However, a light rinsing is wise in this age of pesticides, pollutants, and food preservatives. Despite these arguments, Paul continues to enjoy eating meat. I believe the key word here for Paul is enjoyment. We all make choices and must live with the result they produce. Personally, I have a simple goal in life. I want to die healthy. In other words, I want to keep my mind and body alert and active throughout my entire life. That means in the distant future, I am hoping to enjoy a robust old age. When I am near the end of my life, I would like to be able to walk in the woods, swim in the ocean, and think deep, interesting thoughts. To help encourage this future, I have my own personal insurance policy. I take a moderate amount of vitamin and mineral supplements. I occasionally eat a little fresh fish to ensure I'm not missing any hidden nutrients. I try to keep stress out of my life and go to bed early. I love to exercise and enjoy fresh air. I don't let situations I can't change bring me down. I believe that happiness is a tonic for the body and the soul and that positive Christian choices lead to harmony in life. Know that there is nothing better for men than to be happy and do good while they live. That everyone may eat and drink and find satisfaction in all his toils. This is the gift of God. Ecclesiastes 3, 12-13